Justice Department opens probe into potential banking cartel that financed Archegos. Last evening, Bloomberg News, followed by the Wall Street Journal, reported that the U.S. Department of Justice had opened a probe into the last, into the late March collapse of Archegos Family Office hedge funds. The Wall Street Journal reported that banks that lend to Archegos, including Credit Suisse Group AG, UBS Group AG, Goldman Sachs Group Incorporated, and Morgan Stanley, had been contacted for information by the Justice Department. According to media reports, Archegos is believed to have leveraged $20 billion of its own capital into more than $100 billion in stock and derivative exposure through margin loans from the banks named above, as well as others. Among the laundry list of items the Justice Department may be investigating is whether the banks violated the Federal Reserve's Regulation T, which would have limited the banks to an initial margin loan of no more than 50% of the purchase price of the stock that Archegos was buying. The banks apparently believed that they could avoid Regulation T by cooking up derivatives contracts called a swap agreement that purported to magically allow the banks to claim ownership of the stock positions in SEC filings while allocating the gains and losses on the positions to Archegos. During the lead-up to the Wall Street crash of 1929, Wall Street banks formed pools, which were actually cartels to drive a bull run or bear raid in a particular stock. There is a striking similarity between the pools of the late 1920s and what happened at Archegos. For example, while the banks were providing all that leveraged lending to Archegos, the price of the handful of stocks it was buying were skyrocketing. But when Archegos collapsed, so did the prices of the stocks held by Archegos. According to reporting in the New York Times, Archegos owned $20 billion in shares of Viacom CBS, which made this obscure hedge fund the single largest institutional shareholder of the company. But this information was withheld from the public because the banks were reporting ownership of the shares on their own 13F filings with the SEC. The Times report indicates that the $20 billion value held by Archegos and Viacom CBS shares occurred mid-March, using an average Viacom CBS price between March 15th and March 19th of $96. That would mean that Archegos owned 208,333,333 shares of Viacom CBS, according to the April 2nd proxy filing for Viacom CBS. As of March 26, they had 605,267,057 Class B shares outstanding, meaning that Archegos owned a stunning 34% of the outstanding shares on S&P 500 company without anyone being the wiser. Well, while Archegos was buying Viacom CBS, its shares went from a range of $30 in November to, of 2020 to more than $100 in March of 2021, more than tripling in share price. But when Archegos couldn't meet margin calls for the banks and the share price of Viacom CBS collapsed, as did the hedge fund. Uh, but as this tangled scene was playing out, Viacom CBS and its Wall Street bank underwriters decided to take advantage of the high, high share price to issue more stock to the public. The prospectus filed with the SEC by Viacom CBS for a secondary offering on March 23rd of this year to sell approximately $1.67 billion of its Class B common stock and approximately $1 billion of its Series A mandatory convertible preferred stock had six joint footprinting managers, Morgan Stanley, J.P. Morgan Securities, Citigroup Global Markets, Glo Goldman Sachs, Mizuho Securities, the Cybert, Williams, Shank, and Company. Among the joint uh, book runners, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, and Mizuho have acknowledged being prime brokers, providing financing and other services to Archegos.